right, guys, uh, today we're going to look at lipids, so you should be on page 11 in your packet. So, lipids are a group of hydrophobic and nonpolar macromolecules. So what that means is that they fear water and they do not have a charge, which means they're not attracted to other charged substances. Um, this group, and it says this in your notes, we don't consider them to be polymers, just because to be a polymer, they have to be made up of the same type of monomers. And lipids are kind of weird. They don't really fit into that class. So first we're going to look at the functions of lipids, of which we have four. The first one is long-term energy storage. So remember how when we talked about carbohydrates, they also store energy. But carbs provide a quick source of energy, where lipids provide more long-term. Another function is insulation. So, for example, uh, we have a layer of fat on our body that helps to keep us warm, provides cushioning. Blubber on a whale is another example. The third function is they make up our cell membranes, which we're going to look at more closely here, what type of lipids do that. And then the fourth is that they can send chemical messages throughout our body to tell our body to do different things. So, for example, some hormones are actually lipids. So the elements that make up lipids are similar to carbs, except we have one additional element that's sometimes found in some lipids. So they are carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and then sometimes phosphorus. All right, the building blocks, which we would also call monomers, we're going to put no specific ones here. And that's because, remember, as I said, uh, lipids are not considered polymers because they have varying types of building blocks. So let's look at three different examples of lipids. The first one that I want to look at are the fats. Fats are sometimes called triglycerides, and we'll look at why that is in a moment. So you guys should see you have this diagram in your notes. I want you to grab a highlighter or a marker, and I want you to highlight the regions I've circled and label them as I have. So a fat is made up of four parts. It's called a triglyceride because tri means three, and it has one, two, three fatty acid tails that are attached to what we call a glycerol molecule. And so fats are a source of energy within organisms such as animals. Um, we also have fats in plants as well but those are more of the oil fats. So vegetable oil, canola oil, those all come from fat. Um, but they're uh, liquid at room temperature. There are other types of fats that you might think of that are solid at room temperature. So think of butter, margarine, lard. Those are typically found uh, from animals, and so they're solid at room temperature. So there's different types of fats. The next group are called the phospholipids. So remember how I just said that some lipids have phosphorus? Well, this is that group. So the phospholipids, these actually make up your cell membrane. Every single cell on this planet has a cell membrane, and this is what composes them. So the phospholipids have a unique structure, and we're going to highlight some things on here. So uh, in this diagram here, I have a zoom in on one phospholipid. So guys, right here, this double layer of these what look like little men with heads and two legs, each of those is a phospholipid, and they form this layer of uh, double layer where the tails face each other and the heads face out. So the reason they do that is because the characteristics of the different parts of the lipid. So what I want you to do is I want you to draw in the space under the word phospholipids. I want you to draw and label this diagram that I have my mouse on over here on the right. So this is just a little generic diagram of a phospholipid. It has a head, which is polar and hydrophilic. So remember, that means it has a charge, and it's attracted to water. The head also contains a phosphate group. It also has two tails, two fatty acid tails. Okay, I want you to write that next to where it says nonpolar tails. They're fatty acid tails. So the tails are nonpolar, they're hydrophobic, and they're made of fatty acids. So what happens is, because the tails hate water, they hide in the middle, and they stay away from water. And the heads love water, so they face the outside of the cell and the inside of the cell where there is water. 
And so again, these are called phospholipids and they surround and make up every cell of every organism. Okay, and our last group here are the steroids. So steroids are different from the previous two, and we can tell just right away by looking at the structure of a steroid. It doesn't look like a fat, it doesn't look like a phospholipid. And so steroids are, primarily they act as chemical messengers in our cells. So their function is different from the previous two as well. And so here's a couple of steroids that maybe you've heard of before. Testosterone, which is primarily you think of male, and estrogen, which we think of as a female hormone, although these can be found in both males and females. Cholesterol, which maybe you've heard, you know, your family members talking about watching their cholesterol levels. Cholesterol is a steroid, and it's actually the one I have pictured right here. Um, but cholesterol <clears throat> is actually found in the cell membrane. Remember the phospholipids that we just looked at on the last slide? Cholesterol kind of sticks in between the phospholipids in our cell membranes. And what that does is it helps our membranes to stay fluid, which means they're able to move and they're not rigid. And that's important um, for all cells. So the steroids, and I have this guy over here just as kind of an exaggerated example, because when you think of steroids, you might think of, you know, people taking steroids to help bulk themselves up. Um, there's steroids called anabolic steroids, and they actually do help by um, sending signals which causes your body to just keep increasing its muscle mass. And so that's how we get someone like this guy looking over here. Okay, so just to summarize here, we had three different types of lipids. We had our fats, which are used for energy. We had our phospholipids, which are used for the cell membrane. And we had our steroids, oops, which are used for uh, messengers, okay? Something that they all have in common is that they're primarily hydrophobic and nonpolar, okay? But they're not, mon or they're not polymers because they're not made up of the same type of monomers. So those are the facts. Make sure you've filled in everything into your notes. And that's the end of this little mini lecture.